Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, folks, as we did with every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, R-D, hyphen, oracle.com. That's Ord, hyphen, oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? I think part of the S&Ps is probably near a high here. Um, we can start looking at charts and see what what they say. Yeah, well, you know what's so interesting, Tim? I was listening with you and um, Jacob on Tuesday and as soon as you brought up that, uh, you know, active uh, individual investor, I thought that was so intriguing. And there's no doubt that only took two days to hit, man. Once it went over 100 percent, that's pretty wild, man. You know, but yeah. yeah it's, it's so actually, uh, it's been updated. The chart I sent you, uh, which is chart one, is, is that current view. But it actually backed off. The time I printed this chart, they updated it, and it fell back a little bit. It's like 93 percent. But we're in some sort of a a high here. Uh, I only took the chart back to 2022. You can see the what, one, two, well, counting uh, one, the pre, well, the previous four times, all of them at least uh, put up a decent decline in the market. If not, you know, the one back in it did. December of, uh, was just a minor pullback. But so we're we're kind of looking at a high here of some sort, just because. This is a, well, the National Association of Active Investment Managers. Yes. So it's it's, it's, it's the managers and, and not the individuals. I do have the individuals. Oh, cool. So it's the managers. Not, I got it. Uh, no, thanks, to, uh, thanks for clarifying that. That's awesome. That's even heavier, yeah. actually. That's even heavier. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, it's more heavier. So, yeah. uh, so anyhow, you know, the managers here are, are, you know, on margin, So, uh, which is not a good sign. So right. it tells you where it, how you how safe you feel with putting money with managers. So no, totally. Now you know what's so intriguing about this chart too, Tim, is that I like the idea that not that we can get down the other end of it, but I can see the other end of it too. That what you're talking is that when it gets down to that twenty percent, that's that's normally buys. You don't get down there too often. I mean, it, looking at this chart, you've only got down there a couple times in the last few years, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. That's just why I'm a big fan of panic you know there's different yes. indicators give you a lot you know we talked about the trend in the past how it shows panic yeah this is another kind of a panic indicator you know when everybody blows out right and and really there's nobody long that's when you step in and it's yes. a well way and work that time the next time it won't well i got a history that's going back to i think 1990 and all those times you know yep. uh or, or, you know, when, when everybody's gone, that's the time to walk in, you know, and so I've, I've you know, become pretty confident once bottoms are formed. I'm better at bottoms and tops, but. Yeah, I, I uh, agree. Good, there's, 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 yeah. there's, there's no doubt that you can hold your nose, you can do whatever you got to do to buy it, but I, I absolutely agree because the, 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 the lows, the lows are different, man. The, you know what blows my mind, folks, and Tim, is that this never ends like this, meaning what I mean is that every single time that the markets are at high, everyone will buy highs, but they don't buy the middle and they don't buy lows. It's so weird, man. And that's it. That's like in every business, right? They get it going, you buy a high. It's like, really? <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. You know, but well, now it's safe to buy because everybody else is buying with me. Yeah. You right. Know, right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's amazing how this business works. But, it is. Deviance. You, it, it, you have to live through it, too. You know, you, you do. Go, well, that chart, it's not going to work this time. Well, it does. and always has and always will. Yep. You know, I, so. I, there's no doubt. And, and as Tim just said, folks, see, this is something, you know, Tim, myself, you can, you can definitely teach some things. But going through the cycle makes it much easier because, you know, you got you're nervous, your gut's going, your head's going, everything's going, and then all of a sudden it comes out, you know, most of the time what we're talking about is buying lows that it comes out pretty cool. So it's pretty wild, man. Yeah. You know? I love this yeah. shot, though. I'll tell you, it perked me up. I, was, I think I was in the car I was come, I, when I was listening to you guys, and, and as soon as I did, because I hadn't heard this in so long, you hadn't brought up one of these shots, and I remember even in the 90s, you used to look at this a lot, and you probably still do. I just had, hadn't seen it. You know what I'm saying? So it was. I says that perked me up. And as soon as I got home, I jumped on this my computer in about a second. So pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, so. Yeah. I, it's, it's, yeah. I kind of I go through quite a few charts every day. We can kind of just glance through them, and, and yes. so either they pop out at me, 
or they don't, and this one just did. So, yep. um, so I thought I'd pass that along. And I'm kind of, you know, I'm not a, a huge barrier. I think the market will be higher year end than we are right now. Right. But I think you know, over the next couple of months, could get kind of a little hairy here. How big uh, of a pullback we'll get? I'm not sure. Um, because you, you just not, I don't know. You just not. I'm take a look there. at I can, chart. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, see, let's, let's take a look at chart two. Okay. I got and it. And this is a week, yeah, this is a weekly QQQ. Yes. And I can go back further, but you don't get a good view. But basically, it's all the same thing. If you get at least 50% of the trading range above the upper Bollinger Band, and uh, yesterday, this is, Oh, that, this is today. Yesterday, we're way above it. Yes. And today, we we backed off, and I don't think this is quite the top yet. Um, the only reason why, because today's volume is going to be higher than yesterday's volume. Okay. And we're probably drawing a, a, a bearish and golf bear, but, but the market, if you ever look at it, never ends at a high volume, and all these high-volume highs are always tested. Yes. Now, I hate to say always. No, but I'm with you. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> There's always steps to the rule. But oop, I hear the music. Okay, stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. And don't forget about our Tiger Dolls sale, folks, okay? You know, you can buy $500 worth of Tiger Dolls. You get a 600 That's a 20% bonus. You can buy 1000 and you get uh, 1800 No, 1300 That would be a pretty cool, 1800 huh? Buy 1000 you get 1300 30%. And you buy 1500 you get 21%. Stay right there. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Tim Wood, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you. You're growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 24, NASDAQ's down 348, S&P's up 48. And I uh, have the uh, QQQ chart up, Tim. Yeah, uh, this was basically right at, it was actually above, the open close so far is actually above the upper Bollinger Band. So 100% of the open close, if we close here tomorrow. So that would suggest next week could be a down week. So in last last week, we didn't close above the fifty percent of the trading range above the upper Bollinger Band. If you if you can see to the the blown up window. So, yes, I see that. Uh, yeah, it's not quite. It's, 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 it actually has to be pretty darn close. But anyhow, it's a little. It's evidence that it works fairly well. It's just kind of a momentum chart. In other words, momentum's. You get above the Bollinger Band, you're you're over two standard deviations against the norm, right. and the norm is the mid Bollinger Band. So it tells you you're too far uh, pushed away from normal, I guess you might say. So it kind of gets back to normal. There's another sign, but yeah, I flipped to chart three. Okay. And we saw this chart before, probably I don't know. I think beginning of I think we talked about beginning of 2024 because we talked about it, and that's at RSA uh, 80. Yes, uh, 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 which I said was never the last high. Yes, uh, this this chart goes back to 2017, and a lot of times you he says, "Yeah, it, it marks the midpoint of the move." And, and when we were talking back in January 2000 or this year, you know, it pretty much did mark halfway of of the move. That's amazing, isn't it? You, wow, yeah, it did. So so now we're hitting again. Yesterday closed at. Uh, 81.98, and uh, that was the uh, uh, 14 day. So we hit 80, and we're down from that today. But I got two squares on there on the SP, SPY chart. You see those? I do see that third one down, folks. So, well, not it's in about the middle. Little, uh, yep, because they're sticking right out really good. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I'm thinking that's what's going to happen. We're not. We're at a high. But I don't. I don't think we're at a significant high. I think either we're going to look like the middle one in 2020 there, which the market kind of flipped sideways, went up and down for okay. a couple three months, or it could be 2017. You know, the far right one. I think that market just went sideways for a couple three months. So you know, it's, I don't think this is just a hesitation for a week or two. I think it's a hesitation for a month or two. So uh, that's how I'm seeing it. But it's not the final high. It's just a timeout and an uptrend. But it could get sloppy here over the next couple of months. That's what I'm thinking. So, And if we get sloppy uh, for the next couple of months, I can see uh, some real volatility because of the fact, Tim and folks, that we've gone up for so long. It's been the grind up. But you know what I'm saying? It's like at the very beginning of this, folks, 
people will keep trying to buy the dip and that's where it gets really dangerous. This is going to be interesting, man. Yeah, it really is. So, yeah. Because time-wise, Tim, out. you know, we're in the right yeah. time also that, you know, next, you know, couple months, you know, are, seem to always be just a, you know, tough time in the marketplace. So. Yeah, you know, people are taking vacations, whatever. I don't know, but yep. we'll, we'll try to pick out a couple of lows, you know. But uh, I guess you could stay here, stay long. But you know, there could be a, you know, a five percent correction. I don't think there could be a. Ten, it could be a. I don't know. I, I'm not a. No, I'm I, with you. I get it. I get it. Trust me. I, I think there could be a five percent. Oh yeah, you know, easy enough. I mean, why not? And, we uh, just went up a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So. So anyhow, so I, I'm thinking, you know, we're, I'm still long the S and P's right now, but I'm, if to, if yesterday's high gets tested tomorrow or next week, I'm probably out of that long trade and okay. probably kind of maybe set. That's how I'm positioning myself. But right now, as we're talking, uh, I'm still long. But here's here's an interesting chart. I flipped to chart four. Okay, chart four. I got. Uh, okay, I have it. Yeah, it's a really interesting chart. You know, the top window is the HUI, yep. the bottom window is the NDX, and the middle window is the HUI NDX. So when this chart's going up, gold stocks are outperforming the NDX. NDX is like the QQQ. Yes. And HUI is like GDX. Right. So, uh, but anyhow, I just, that's for your readers, but anyhow, or your listeners. So, anyhow, when this chart's going up, HUI is outperforming NDX. When it's going down, NDX is outperforming HUI. I see. Well, the, it's from about 2000, well, it looks like 2001 up to 2012, you know, the best investment was HUI compared to the NDX. Oh, yeah. Well, for NDX was a better investment compared to HUI all the way from 2012 to currently where we are right now. Right. Well, I will point out that ratio is now matching what happened back in 2001. Which is a mind blow. So, I know. Yeah, it's real, you know, and these markets know where their tops and bottoms are. You know, they just pick them out. So I'm curious, is, uh, going forward now, you know, uh, gold stocks, in general, since 2012, have been garbage. I know. This I mean, that's 12 years. 12 years would yeah. yeah I, I get it, man. And you know, you can make right. the case, folks. Okay, when you're getting consolidation for 12 years, you know, the more cars it's built, the higher you can go. I, I, this is it, remember, folks. If you're in your car, this is this is all archived, so you can pull these charts up. You know, uh, when you get home, because this is a beautiful chart, man. This is this is pretty sick. That it's done the whole round trip, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like wow, yeah. It, 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 what was what, what, what back? You know what? Twenty four years or twenty three, twenty four years. Well, yes, yeah, twenty three years ago. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's been full circle. And we've been talking on, on your program that I'm thinking there's something big going on in the gold market. Yes, this is not like a, 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 a couple of month rally. I think there's a multi month. It's not a multi year rally. Right. And uh, I, I think I have that chart. Uh, yeah, I do. So I think I have that chart. We do have it. We're going to cover it. Okay, cool. But so, uh, anyhow, so I thought that was interesting. You know, what can you really derive from it? That, you know, gold market, gold stocks, at least, was not the place to be. Yes. It really, they really have sucked. Right. And they've sucked for a long time. And all these little bit, bitty ones, you know, the 10, 15, 20, 50, or 50 cent stocks, I think are going to be gold mines. That's pun intended. Going forward, here. No, I, so anyhow, I thought I thought this chart was interesting. No, there's no doubt. So, you know, they listen. The only thing that's green on the screen today are gold and silver stocks. <laughs> Period. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You got a couple of real so, estate stocks, but the golds, the silvers, they're 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 Sherman Williams green in a big way. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> so, all right. We're, we're taking, we got, I guess we don't have time to look at five. We'll, we'll come back at five. Yeah, we'll come right back. We're going to get a few more shots. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back, and we got the Dow Industrials up 36, NASDAQ's down 309, S&P's up 41. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Well, welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Oy, Tom O'Brien, we do appreciate you. Go, Rah, what a problem with us. We have the Dow up 14, NASDAQ's down 328, S&P's are up 46, and I'm on the uh, HUI uh, NDX chart, Tim. All right, but that's the only thing I want to point out that we're back to where we were in 2000. Yes. 
So is that a big signal? I don't know. I don't have enough information, but I thought that was curious. So let's flip to uh, chart five. It's kind of a repeat of what we've been saying. Okay, I have but, it. Yep. But uh, this is a monthly chart. This is, I, I, I don't know, I hate to say holy grail, but this chart really works on the on the monthly time frames. So yes. Once they give a signal, the, really the signals are usually really stick. But anyhow, the bottom window is a monthly cumulative advanced decline for GDX, and the top window is a cumulative up-down volume <coughs> for GDX. Let me get a drink here. My cool. throat's yep. getting dry. Take your time. Yep. But anyhow, I got Bollinger Band on both of them, and when both of them close above the mid Bollinger Band, you get at least a multi-month, if not a multi-year rally. And they did close above the mid Bollinger Band on May 31st of this year. And if you notice, uh, that rally on both those indicators are extending above the mid Bollinger Band. So we got a, you know, we got a buy signal here in a big way. How long it's going to last? I know the last sell signal came in, it looks like about January 2021 and remained on a sell signal uh, until uh, May of, two, of, of 2024. So that's, you know what, four, three years, I guess. So are we going to go up for three years? Don't know, but uh, we're going to go up for a while, and this, this rally is not going to be over for a long time. So I'm thinking a lot of these stocks, the little ones really haven't performed. they just really been garbage for a long time they just kind of went down yes and i'm I'm looking at the monthly bollinger bands on those you stick those on the monthly bollinger band and a lot of those the bollinger bands on the monthly time frames are squeezing together and a lot of them are starting to close above their mid bollinger band right so that's the reason, that's the reason why i'm thinking a lot of these little ones are going to turn into big ones at some point over the next year or two so I'm thinking that's what's happened. So I think there's a huge opportunity in front of us. So Yeah, you know, and so what, what does what happen here, folks, again, and don't get misled by some of the small numbers inside these equities because they've been down for so long. Because, you know, a lot of these equities still make money, which is a mind blower when they're trading even under ten dollars. Hey Tim, let me ask you something though. This is gonna get interesting, particularly like be here right now. If I look at the GDX right now, right, like just on the daily, you see how far above mm -hmm. it, the top Bollinger Band it is? I mean, it's it's like the the bottom of it. All right, on the daily? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't do the daily. Um, no, I, I'm... What it, okay, so watch this. If I even just put, put it on the monthly, it's busting above it, too. Now, not, not the cumulative, oh, but the... The the monthly GDX yeah yeah uh, uh, okay I'll have to look at that well I got another indicator uh, that I might have to uh, I'll take a look at it we we uh, yeah, we'll cool. talk uh, what yeah. next Tuesday whatever but I have an indicator that I presented on your show is that eighteen day average of the up down volume advanced client indicators yes yes and that's where where the blue one was up and I had the pink yeah and those two yes. indicators yes. the blue minus ten yep well. When they're above minus 10, both of them, the uptrend's intact. Well, today, as I'm looking at it right now, one's 25 and the other one's 30, 31. Okay. And they're they're both almost, there's no divergence, actually, as the market's making a higher high above the mid-May high. One of those indicators are already above the other one high, and the other one's kind of matching. So and they measure momentum on a, a three-week time frame. It's because it's an 18-day average. Yes. You know, it's 15 it would be 15, but it seems 18 works best. What I'm saying is there's no divergence here yet. Okay. So um, uh, internally, what's going on right now, according to those two indicators, which measures up volume and down volume in advance and decline, in other words, which is basically, a, you know, that's all the market is, is volume and, and uh Advanced issues and declining issues. Yes, and so far there's there's no divergence here. So I'll have to take a look at that chart and look at it, see what. Yeah, because that's only a short term know. deal anyway. I mean, I, I, we know that the underlying strength. I mean, what you've been saying is you know 100. percent I mean, we can see the underlying strength right now today. I mean, you know, markets down, every gold stock is up, and it's up good. They're up, you know, 
three percent to seven percent. So you know, you would we that underlying strength that we that you've been looking at is here. Period. I mean, it's yeah, like, you know. yeah, it's here. It's just come, and it was kind of hard to read. You know, a couple of you know, end of uh, end of last year, we were talking about it. Nothing was going on. We kind of like, well, maybe the signals failed. Well, they didn't. They just kind of went sideways and broke yes. out. But here's uh, uh, what you're talking about, Tom. Is if you look at G- the middle of the chart, GDX. Yes, I have the Bollinger Bands on that. Yes. So what you're saying is. Um, and this well, might have just happened thing. today. Hey, this is, uh, uh, that's, I mean, that's, it's. That's, that's what you're looking at, right. So yeah. if you look back in 2020, it, you can't quite tell, but, you know, different markets act different against their Bollinger Bands. All, you know, whatever that rule is uh, on the um, SPY works a little bit different than the QQQ, works a little bit different than the GDX. Yes. But right now I, I see we're above them. Uh, up Bollinger Band, but we're not above it 50% yet. If you look to the far right, do you have that small That's window correct. there? That's correct, yes. Right, right. Yep. So, looks like we're not quite halfway up yet. If we get to 39, we might be by tomorrow, so I don't know. Yeah, it's not um, the end of the world anyway. It's just, it, 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 in, in one way, Tim, and folks, it almost makes sense to me because, see, for, for the amount that actually gold is up today, I'm surprised that some of these aren't up 10% right across the board. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, but they're not. But they're strong. I'm just saying that it gets kind of... It, you know, we know this gold market is always a little bit tricky. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay. Man, yeah, it is. You know. Actually, what, what, what you're talking about is trying to find out where the next high is. Yes. That's on page six. Okay, here we Here's go. An Let's do that, folks. That's yeah. a beautiful thing. Okay, I'm ready. All right. All right. The, the middle window... Is the weekly? I, there's a lot of good signals that come off the weekly chart in the gold market. The dailies don't work as good. The monthlies don't work as good. For some reason, the weeklies work pretty good. Yeah, we'll keep that in mind. The middle window. Pardon? No, I say we'll keep that in mind. We appreciate that information, man. Yeah. Oh, all right. So anyhow, the middle window is a weekly HUI gold ratio, and so uh, this chart goes back to 1992, or I can't quite read it. Or maybe that's 80. Well, anyhow, chart goes a long ways back. So we'll leave it at that. Yes. But anyhow, when the RSI for the HUI gold weekly ratio gets above 70 or times where you're, you're topping out on an intermediate term basis, it's not a, it can, it can, most of the time it's, it's a worthwhile top. You know, back in 2000, that big rally from 2000 low up to 2000. Eight high, wherever it was, or seven high. Yeah. Uh, the RSI of, of those got above seventy, and they they produced uh, multi looks like multi month uh, consolidations. Still in a bull market, but they consolidate for several. Yeah, months. just just stay so there one, one second. We got one more quick break. We're gonna come right back with Tim, folks. We're gonna finish this baby up because it's way too important to go off right now. Welcome back, folks. And folks, don't forget about the Target Dollar Sale. We got Larry trading live tomorrow morning. Right now, we're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ward, and I have this uh, the, the 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 six chart up here, Tim. All right. So this this was uh, the chart that actually what I'm kind of looking for to figure out if you're at a worthwhile high, and the and so it's the RSI, the weekly RSI for the HUI Gold Index. So right now, the the, the sixty five oh two. It needs to be a 70 or higher to get the signal. And I pointed out with red arrows a lot nice. of times yes. uh, they did. And they all, they all came at, you know, worthwhile high. So um, don't know what what's going to happen here. But uh, I think this rally, you know, you'll see some mild consolidations and, and this RSI fails to get to 70. And I think we run into September, October before we get a worthwhile high. That's what I'm thinking, you know, but I'll play the numbers as they come in. But if this market keeps rocketing up and this weekly RSI for the HDY Gold Index gets above, you know, 70, you know, like 75 or something, I'll be forced to say, yeah, we're, we're due for a decent, you know, consolidation. Uh, that's all a consolidation because, you know, because of chart five. This is so cool, man. We're, okay. We're Folks, you, you got to see this chart. But we may see a multi, you know, maybe a multi, you know, two, three month, five. I don't know. 
No, it makes sense. No, I, I get it. And, and folks, remember, if you're in a car, you got to see this chart. I, I understand right what you're saying right now. This is so cool, Ben, particularly because you can see this one too, Ben. Every time, folks, okay, Tim's got two, four, six, seven arrows up here, man. Yeah, this is uh, very consistent. Holy cow, look at that, huh? Yeah, so this is yeah. what you've been explaining to us. You can't go up too fast. That's the bottom line, right? We got we to gotta slow down a little. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's... That's so when the, when the this ratio is in other words, gold stocks are really outperforming gold in in too good of a way. That's going to be a bad sign. Yeah, <laughs> I love so. it. Well, listen, Tim, right. it's always a pleasure. You have a, a great weekend, a safe weekend. We look forward to speaking to you next Tuesday. All right, love you, man. Love you, man. Take care, and right. thank you for the great right. education yeah. and these great calls, man. Because you definitely, man, you talk about uh, calls, man. Have a great one. Have a okay. safe one, folks. Come back and visit uh, Tommy and Jacob tomorrow morning, folks. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Mm -hmm.